Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Junkin' with Junior. Sorry for the delay, it's been a long time since we've had a video up. All I can say is life gets really crazy. And uh, the old saying, when life gives you lemons, you'd better make some lemonade. So I've been squeezing the heck out of some lemons, trying to make the best lemonade that I can make, and I've consumed plenty of it. So life is crazy, but it's time to get back to some projects here. So what have we got? We've got some hand-me-down freebie air horns probably off of an RV big rig type deal that we're gonna put on crew cab square body and had to get us a pump and compressor, uh, compressor pump and tank setup relay and some air lines and all that sort of good stuff. So we gotta figure all this stuff out where we're gonna put it all. Don't have a clue yet, haven't really looked. There should be plenty of room under the truck. Uh, and then we'll run some wiring back up under the hood, uh, possibly to a relay block that we already have on there if we can utilize that. So we're gonna dive into this project and see what we can get started. So one of the things that I've always wanted to have some really loud horns on my truck, but one of the things that I don't like about air horns is sometimes they're just so loud and they scare the crap out of people, which is definitely fun and amusing. Um, but I don't like the really loud, you know, hurt your ears kind of air horn. I prefer the, you know, big rig style stuff. So that's what these should be perfect for. Um, who, I have no idea what they were on before, but we know that uh, we're gonna be able to make them work for what we're doing. So let's see what we got here. We got the old uh, Via Air little basic kit here. Nothing over the top, because we're, uh, we're not running, you know, massive amounts of air ride suspension or anything like that on this truck. So we kept it simple. Um, don't need all those really crazy bells and whistles. Small compressor, so it'll be easier to mount this kind of stuff, hopefully. Just gotta find some places for all of it and, uh, you know run a few wires um most likely gonna hook this up so that the compressor comes on uh the ignition switch relay so that it's not on a toggle switch to have extra wires run inside because i'm not a fan of drilling any holes in the dash on this truck uh there are none in it um and it's been that way since it left gm's assembly line and we're going to keep it that way just like it to be nice and clean i'm not into that gaudy stuff of let's put you know a bunch of switches on it to make something work so got a nice little air tank here and wow this thing's actually really heavy um a nice steel piece uh you know for the price point this stuff being pretty affordable it makes sense that it's not made out of aluminum uh one gallon very stout uh gonna have to mount this on you know the frame or something very rigid because it's a it's a heavy unit two bolts to mount it on so we'll figure that part out we got our basic uh, line kit that it comes with whoops we got some rubber isolator feet for the compressor little bushings a relay a pressure switch so that it will turn the pump on and off as we need it a couple of reducer fittings okay so here's some mounting bolts with some uh, big grommets as well to go in the tank so that we don't have to worry about that uh, vibrating and or rattling but nice secure mount some wiring of course we got some bleeders here wind blowing our trash all over the place we'll have to pick up got some fittings to get us started not sure if i'm going to use all this um this quarter inch line should be plenty for what we're doing uh we could always increase the size if we need to um we'll go with some of the quick connect style fittings rather than these compression style fittings probably just depends on what all we have to have uh one t there we are gonna have there's another one um we'll have some sort of a t to go to both horns so we'll figure all that stuff out as we go uh but priority gonna figure out where the horns are gonna go where the tanks gonna go and where this little guy is gonna go so let's head underneath the truck and find out where we're gonna put all this junk all right so we got to change of plans as I got underneath the truck I didn't think it was gonna be too good of an idea to put it up there because the tank has a drain position on it so when we get some water you know accumulation in the tank humidity build up uh, we can drain it so the tank needs to be mounted in the upright position uh, so I think our best bet is going to be in between our drive shaft and uh, the exhaust here uh, underneath the bed so if we put it directly in the center of the truck we have plenty of drive shaft clearance it's never going to go up that high if it does we got more problems to worry about than this air tank and uh, we're going to stick it right up there in the middle so i put me a couple little scratch marks up there as a reference so we can get this thing drilled let's do it
got the tank mounted up here and uh i think it's gonna work out pretty good there like i say plenty of drive shaft clearance there it is mounted on rubber so we don't have to worry about that uh you know fatiguing and wearing out the uh flex lines and stuff like that so that's the little kit that comes with it two bolts mounted up to the bed we can put our uh, rubber mat back over that on the top side it's all tight and done we're ready to mount some horns and then we'll mount a compressor do a little bit of wiring and then it'll be time to run some lines okay so while we're under the truck uh, and had all the tools out got our tank mounted first then i figured well we might as well go ahead and get this pump mounted up in here so uh just behind the bed uh you know support there for the floor seemed to be the best place for this um I don't think it's gonna get too much heat from the mufflers here. It's a decent gap and there's plenty of airflow under here anyways. And it only made sense to mount it there with the hose uh, so it can go right here to the end of the tank. Uh, so we gotta put some sealer on there. This is actually a swivel fitting. Uh, so the hose won't twist up on us and that's actually a check valve that they have uh, built onto the end of the hose as well So when the compressor's off, we don't have to worry about it uh, Leaking down and back feeding bleeding back out kicking back on all that sort of stuff. So nice little feature there uh, We can go ahead and get our ground wire hooked up get some power into this thing and we'll figure out where we're gonna mount those horns and uh, We'll be honking before you know it so I've been up a few little brackets in the vise, just some uh, aluminum that I had laying around so it was easy to work with. Uh, steel's kind of a pain, uh, you know, to bend this tight of stuff just in a vise by hand like I was. So aluminum's way to go. I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I had to put a little bit of offset in them uh, so that when the fitting goes in here, we got some room for it to clear underneath the toolbox because I'm going to stick them on the bottom of the toolbox. I think that's the best location. There's not a good place under the truck to mount something this long um due to you know the fuel lines on one side of the frame rail on the passenger side frame rail we've got the intercooler lines coming back so i think there's up there they're out of the weather it'll work fine then we can just run a line uh through the bed it's already got some holes in it that people had previously drilled in there so we can just go straight down through the bed and down to our uh air tank and solenoid down there so i think that'll be a real simple uh install and once i get these on i've got to go to town and get some fittings in line uh, because I didn't think ahead to have all that stuff on hand and ready to go so a couple more pieces we got to run into town and get to make this deal complete but uh, you know it's always fun to go to the parts store and grab some stuff and see if we can get this project wrapped up all right so we're underneath the truck here air compressor redid the mount on that a little bit made it a little bit more sturdier so i like that better got that plumbed into our tank got all our fittings installed here the pressure switch as well which is going to trip the relay to turn the compressor on and off then we got our fitting installed for the outlet going to our solenoid over here not a i wasn't completely thrilled with the solenoid because it didn't come with a bracket I mean, yeah, I could make one, but I don't have any screws that small here. So I just tie wrapped it through the cross member holes. It's, you know, it's not going to go anywhere. Uh, I can't fall down because it has this lip up here. So not the best thing there. I wish it would have came with a bracket, but it didn't. And I just don't have this stuff here to complete that. So then we can get our solenoid wired up. Got to drill a hole in the bed. Um, actually going to use one of these four that's already here who knows what they were for but we're just going to drill one of those out bigger so the line can go from the solenoid up to the horns mounted underneath the toolbox and uh, that's some pretty good progress there so let's uh, carry on with some wiring so navigating our way through the wiring here we've got our relay it's going to be mounted right up in here uh, i am going to have to extend this wire from the compressor to the relay just a little bit got that on our ground screw over here uh, with a couple other wires for the fuel sending unit so then uh, this main red wire here has to go all the way to the front to the battery that's going to feed a solid 12 volts to the relay and then we're gonna have to run a switch 12 volts uh, back to the pressure switch up here uh, on the side of the tank so that it's not uh, going to turn on and off uh, even when the key's in the off position so uh, that away the system's completely powered down and doesn't have uh, power going to it all the time so let's get these couple more wires hooked up okay so as luck would have it i don't have enough wire to run from the horn switch back to the to the air solenoid 
and I don't have enough to run from a switch 12 volt source uh, back to the pressure switch so I'm gonna have to go to the store to get some more stuff but I can go on ahead and get these airlines finalized and uh, at least get something checked off my list and my uh, unpreparedness on this sort of stuff it's just kinda how it goes I always forget something but not a big deal that's the worst that happens we're doing okay My metric and American wrench always a necessity when you're working on any kind of vehicle these days especially with aftermarket components the fitting that comes with this uh, compressor and tank kit it uses this compression style so you have to actually shove it on the little uh, hump on the little barb and then you have to tighten on the nut but all the other stuff the fittings that I got for the solenoid deal that's all the just the push in kind quick release if you ever needed to so a lot easier setup uh, well son of a gun if I didn't make another mistake I completely forgot to see which is the in and the out on this solenoid because apparently it does make a difference well guess what good thing it's only tie wrapped on we can take that right back off real easy and we can mount it back up real easy too here we go okay in and out so this is going to be our inlet over here figure out how we're going to run this hose over the cross member situation something like this see how this looks put a few tie wraps on here to tidy up some of this garbage this will be our inlet so it'll be something just like that okay well, let me grab us a few more tie wraps so I can mount this back up and then we can finish that line Okay, so I'm going to make sure to pay attention that I actually know how this thing is routed this time. And not make this mistake again. So our inlet is going to be pointing towards the driver's side. Just like that. Okay, there's one. And two, just for cheap insurance, you can never go wrong with having too many tie wraps. Zip ties on the scene, they will never let you down. Amazing invention, love to be the guy that patented these darn things. Holy cow! All right, so under the toolbox. Got our T here. I left some slack on this so we got a little bit of room to work with everything. I think I'm going to put it in here just like this. Then I can bring our black line from the bottom of the truck right into that T and then this one can come right over here. Well, that should work pretty decent. So that completes our plumbing portion of the project. All our air lines are done coming up through the bed. Tie out that on the horn. Got our T installed so air is going to go to both horns like it should. Next, we've got to finish that wiring from the horn switch and the ignition switch so we can power up this system and see if it actually works. But I got to go to the store and get some more wire because I'm always unprepared on projects and didn't have enough. So on a square body, the factory horn wire is going to be the black with the green tracer and that came out of the firewall connector and ran up this loom and down through the radiator support and hooked up. It actually split and went to both horns, one on the driver's side, one on the passenger side. So I cut that out, peeled it out of the harness, and fed that down underneath uh, and went to the back of the truck so that we could feed the solenoid with that. I had to extend it uh, and got that hooked up and also got our red wire ran for the relay, uh, the 12 volt feed to the battery post. So we got that all done. So it's time to hit the key and see if our compressor works and starts building up some air. She's loud. It's pumping. Tap, 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 tap. 
Well, they're definitely pretty honky. There's always room for improvement though. One thing I was curious about is the air solenoid that we got it has a fairly small hole going through it. And I think that's holding us back just a little bit on the old air horn volume, if you will. So we might get another one, play around with that, swap it out, see if it gets a little bit louder and a little more instant on the response with a better airflow. Cause it's a pretty small hole compared to the air lines that are going to it. But hey, it sounds good. It sounds like a big rig horn, uh, not those loud, obnoxious train horns and stuff, which are cool. But I like that classic, that's my style. So uh, thanks for watching Junkworth Jr. Hope you enjoyed it and we will see you next time.